Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Joe. Card game is popular with our players. Displaying each card with the same spacing is the basic step when we're making a game. In this video, we will have a look at how to display each sprite with the same spacing. And then we will create one card by UI and display all of our UI cards in our game. No matter how many cards we have, we can display with the same spacing either. All stuff will be controlled by our script. Ok, let's get started. Here, let's open up Unity and create one 2D project. In this episode, we will need one font used for our UI text and several sprites for our project. You can go to the website to find any font what you want. I will also be linking all of the assets we are using in this video in the description box, so you can grab them for free. So first, let's drag all of our assets folder inside our project. Slice our sprites first. Choose the multiple types and open the sprite editor. For this image, you can choose to slice by seal size or slice by seal count because our sprites already has been laid out in a regular pattern during creation. Also, you can choose to slice automatically. Actually, we don't need to care some empty space in this case. Some tiny images part will be detected by spread editor by using slice automatically. But we only need other sprites. Slicing automatically is very handy and save your time in this situation. Optional, you can change the camera color to your favorite colors. In this case, we will first use one single sprite to lay out our card with the same spacing. Then we will create one UI card game object to display our UI game object instead of one single sprite. There are many methods to solve this topic such as the grid layout component or canvas group. Even manually set up each point position at the beginning. All methods are powerful and will be applied in different circumstances. But in this tutorial, we will use C# script to control it, and later we will talk about the differences between several methods. Let's create one empty game object and reset its transform component. Then we can use one simple logo to make it easy to check on our scene view. We call him first position. We want our sprites to display in one line so that we need another point. Duplicate our game object and drag to here. And change another logo for our last position. Both of them have the same y-axis value. They stay in the same horizontal. We can set our first position x value to negative 7 and our last position x value to 7. We want our cards to display at the same spacing on this line, no matter how many cards we have. Let's drag one sprite to our hierarchy and change his size. Then, we can duplicate several times to drag different sprites to their own source image. The reason is that we want to first create several game objects as prefab and then we will display these game objects in the game. We can create one new folder and drag each image game object as prefab in this folder. Ok, we have created 10 game objects inside our prefab folder. We will use them later. Now we can create them on hierarchy. Right click on the hierarchy, click on create an empty game object called position manager. This one is going to be the same object that's going to hold our new C# script. Let's create one C# script called place and drag the script into our position manager game object. We need to store our first and last transform position and each card position will depend on our card's number. If we have two cards, so the distance of these two cards will be the length of our first and last position x value. If we have three cards, 
the distance of each card will be the length of our first and the last position x value divided by 2. If we have four cards, the distance of each card will be the length divided by 3, etc, etc. Write public transform, first transform, last transform. Also, we have to store the bunch of cards what we have. So we create one game object followed by square brackets, which means we are using array to store a collection game object type card together. Let's bind to unity and drag each game object in case of we forgot to drag them later. We can click the locked button to lock our inspector. So even we have to select it a different game object, the inspector will not change. It's handy for us to focus on one particular inspector and drag each game object what we want. First, let's drag six image to our card array. Now we have six cards. Let's create one display card method. We need to know the spacing between each card. So create one local variable called space. The local variable will only active inside this method. We cannot access the local variable outside this method. Our space should be equals to, let's look at the tips. If we have two cards, these two cards will be displayed on the first and the last position. If we have three cards, the second cards will be displayed on the middle of our point, and its spacing will be the length divided by two. If we have three cards, we will have two spacing. If we have four cards, we will have three spacing, etc., etc. So the space number is the cards numbers minus one, and each space value shall be the whole length divided by the space number. So our space is equal to last transform type dot position dot x to minus first transform dot position dot x and then divided by the space number. The space number should be the cars number minus one. Let's for loop all of our cards using square brackets and inside the square brackets is one integer type number which represents the index of our array. Each card we will use cards open brackets i close brackets dot transform dot position is equal to new vector 2. The x position should be the first position dot x and then add the space multiplied by i and the y value shall be the first transform dot position dot y or last position dot y because their position y value are the same value on the y axis. We know that the first index of our array start from zero, so we can list several situations to test. If we have two cards, our first card will appear on the first position and our second card will be located on the last position. If we have three cards, four cards, etc. You can list these several conditions and understand why we need to multiply by i in the position x. Save the script and bind to unity. Now we have six game objects, which has stored on the position manager script. We can drag these six prefabs to the hierarchy. Let's drag them on the random position. Don't forget to call this method in our script. And then press play. Hmm, nothing happens. Back to Unity, let's drag our game object to the position manager script again. Yes. All of our sprites display with the same spacing. Cool. Now we can change the card's number to 3 to test again.
Now we can change the number to 10 and see no matter how many cards we have, our cards always display with the same spacing. Alright, we have almost complete our script, and then we want to create several UI cards to display. Let's create one UI canvas. In here, we need to choose the world space mode. In this mode, the canvas will behave like any other objects in the scene. The size of the canvas can be set manually using its rack transform and the UI elements will render in front of or behind other objects in the scene based on 3D placement. Many times we choose to the overlayer mode and the overlayer mode display on the top of the scenes and hard to control the UI elements position. We will have many UI cards and we will treat them as a normal game object in the scene. And the other settings we don't really have to worry about. You will notice that we have a huge wall space canvas now. First, let's change the position to 0, 0. Create one empty game object and change its size. Scale down this empty game object, and if the size is not profile what we want, of course, go back and manually change its size later. Create one UI image as the child of our empty game object, and sketch out this image and change their name. The UI image will be our card background image, and the empty game object's name is card01. Drag our card background image into source image. Press and check the preserve aspect to preserve its sprite's aspect ratio. Let's scale down our card 01 first and change the UI image size because I feel our single card is little big. Then create one UI image as our card HP image. Change its size. Under the health image, we can create one UI text called health text. You will notice that it's very hard for us to see the text number now. Let's change the UI text scale to 0.01 and then zoom in the UI text size and then enlarge the size to the right size. Give the text content number 2. You can try to change the scale size band to 1. You will feel the text is not very clear. Also, you can choose to the Text Mesh Pro either. Optional, you can add the outline component to highlight this text. Then, you can duplicate our health image group to make our attack and the manner UI parts. Because each image has a different size, you can manually change their position and its size for the best effect. After that, we can create one UI image to display our card profile and drag the character image to its child.
Also, we can create one UI image to display the card name and the name content text. Finally, we can duplicate this name image as our description image. If you find some of UI parts are covered by others UI images, you can select them and change their order on the hierarchy. Now we have completed our first UI card game object. Awesome! In order to save our time, we will use this game object as a standard card and only change its names and his manner text to make a difference between each card. In your game, you can choose to use the single class or scriptable object to edit our cards to make it differences. In here, we just duplicate our first UI card and simply change its names and manner text as another prefab. Okay, we have complete 10 UI cards prefabs. Actually, we need to type something on our c -sharp script. We need to instantiate each card game object at the beginning of the game. Back to Unity, we have five UI cards. Drag each prefab and press play. Hmm, nothing happens. But if we focus on our hierarchy, actually we have instantiated them, but they did not render on the scene. The reason is that we create these UI cards on the wall space canvas. But this UI cards did not attach to our world space canvas yet. In play mode, you can try to drag one of our UI cards under the world space canvas. It works. So how can we do that? That's so easy. Back to the script, we want each card game object as the child of our UI canvas. We can use transform.setParent, type public field, and create one transform type variables called word canvas transform. We want our new card as a game object type when he was instantiated. Then, each new card will be attached to our world canvas transform. New cards dot transform dot set parents world canvas transform. Drag our world space canvas to the right position. Import the cards number to 5 and press again. Yeah, 5 cards display on our screen and all cards have the same spacing with each other. We can change the size of our cards to 4 and try again. In this case, when we use c -sharp script instead of setting up position manually, if we use manually, we have to determine how many cards in our hand, and each situation has different point positions. And we also need another different c -sharp script to list all of our conditions. But in our methods, using a simple c -sharp script to achieve all circumstances and display card with the same spacing no matter how many cards we have. Alright, this is the end of this video. In the next episode, we will discuss how to start our card game randomly and get different numbers of our cards depends on our player order. In that case, we will place each position manually and focus on our code such as the list, single pattern, add an even number, function with the parameters, and many other things. 
Hopes you can learn a lot in this summer. As I mentioned, all of the assets and the complete project can be downloaded from the link below. The text version will be uploaded if my accent is not clear enough. If you want to watch more videos about Unity tutorials, Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and game design, you can click my profile and subscribe to my channel. I'm so appreciated. Alright, see you in the next time.